Hey y'all and welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about like how I make money as a stay-at-home mom. Mama. I guess I'm not a stay-at-home mom. It's Mama. more like a working mom. And this is this is how most of my day goes. I'm trying to make videos or I'm trying to answer emails, get on phone calls, whatever with her. She is constantly right here next to me in my little office. I essentially have seven forms of income, seven streams of income, I guess. Um, most of them are social media related, which is I'm very grateful to be able to have money coming from social media. But other ways or how I've made money without social media before I started doing this, this is how I started making money. So, so I've actually been doing social media for a couple years now. I started when I got in college, but I didn't really take it seriously until after I had my daughter. I didn't make my first even dollar until my husband and I were getting married or already married. And even then it was like a $70 brand deal at most. It wasn't anything big. So within the last year, I've actually been taking it way more seriously, doing more things, found out how to monetize in the best way. So that's how I've been making the majority of my income. And maybe one day I'll make enough for childcare because this child, <laughs> it's, it's hard to work with her in here. I'm gonna start from least to greatest of things that make me the least amount of money versus the most amount of money. So starting off selling clothes, I've been doing that since college. Like literally I thrift a lot of my clothes and then I go sell them after I've worn them for a while. And a lot of times I actually make good money from it. A Play-Doh's closet, once upon a child, now that I have a daughter, <laughs> she is on one. It's getting close to her nap time, so she's starting to get fuzzy. So since having my daughter, I've been selling to like once upon a child, a Play-Doh's closet, things like that. And it's kind of, it's not a big money maker, but when you're in a pinch and you just need something, it is very nice to be able to sell those things. Um, I do go to different locations. I go to actually locations that are three hours away from each other because I found that just different locations take different things. So it always just depends on how much you're doing. So next from that, if you can tell all right there, I have lenses and cameras. I don't even know how many I have at this point. And this isn't really technically a career for me yet, but I have been paid a couple times to do photography. So it is technically a side quest of mine, a side hustle, I guess. I do make money from photography. I actually have an engagement shoot on Sunday that I'm doing for someone. And then I have my first wedding in December. So I'm excited, or my second wedding, my first truly paid wedding that isn't part of the family. It's like somebody that hired me. Really excited about that. It does make me a good bit of money because it's photography, but it kind of is sparingly. I'm not pushing it. I'm really more doing content creation than anything, but photography is a little side quest. It's, it's, it's not something that you can really rely on and that you get like a steady paycheck on. So one thing I do every single week, I've talked about this before in one of my errands vlogs, but I actually clean my mom's house. I am a maid for my mother and it sounds really weird, but basically she was trying to pay my student loans. I used to be a working mom or a part-time working mom. When I was pregnant, I was working as a social media specialist for a pretty big company and I ended up quitting because it was a bad environment and I was pregnant and it was just way too much stress and it, I, I was getting paid nothing to work at this job. So I basically left. I started working in a boutique. Well, I worked at the boutique for two or three years now. I think it was more like three years. I lost my job. The boutique went out of business. And yeah, so I was pretty much stranded with no way to make money, nothing like that, about a year ago. And my mom hired me to be her maid. And it's weird to say that, but basically I have student loans that I had to pay and everything that I was making from social media was either going to student loans or groceries and then everything I made from the boutique was going to that as well. So I was already barely making ends meet with that and then I lost my job. So then my mom hired me because she was trying to pay my student loans and I just would not let her pay my student loans. I thought that was really weird. I felt uncomfortable with it. So we made an arrangement. She needed a maid. She's been wanting to hire a maid for a very long time and my dad just doesn't like the idea of somebody else being in his house that isn't his family or friends or whatever so long story short I got hired on as the maid so every week I go and clean my parents house for a it's, a it's a pretty small sum of money but it's enough to pay my student loans so that is a form of income um but yeah it's kind of weird I don't I don't know I feel weird talking about it because it just feels kind of awkward that actually started before I started making a decent income from social media so when I started being their maid like that was truly how I paid my bills how are how we paid for groceries and how we paid for clothes and how we paid for everything. And after a few months of that, I got kind of tired of it. And I was like, you know what? Like I'm taking this more seriously. We're going to get started on this. And um, yeah, that's kind of where this has spiraled. Now we get into the influencer. I don't like that word, but content creator bulk of how 
to make money how I make money as a stay-at-home mom or a part-time working mom I don't know how to explain it work from home mom I mean I, I do work pretty much all day in this office but it doesn't feel like I'm working so I don't know I always just say I'm a stay-at-home mom so we get into the content creator side of it which I know is what everybody wants to know so Amazon and like to know it are my two affiliate links that I work through so I make a, a commission through affiliate links it's a decent commission it's enough to pay for groceries once a month but it's not something to like sustain really it's it's harder to make money i am now kind of learning how to work through them i just started posting on like to know it and amazon this year really i started posting consistently probably around march of this year so in a couple months i've kind of learned how it works a little better i've started seeing more sales i've started seeing more commissions i've started seeing like how it works a little bit better um I also graduated with an advertising degree, so I'm kind of like obsessed with advertising and marketing and all that stuff. So I constantly overanalyze and overthink everything and I have a hard problem or hard time trying to see how to monetize, but I've, I've learned, I've learned a little bit better. And we get into TikTok. So I am a part of the TikTok creator program. It started out as the creator fund back whenever, and I joined when it was the creator fund. They used to pay you for anything that was like under a minute. It was like 15 second videos you get paid for. It paid crap, like it, it did not pay very well. I was a part of that when it started until the part when it ended. And it paid you like, 10 cents per every 10,000 views or something. It was terrible. You didn't get anything from that. So about a year later, after they had the creator fund, they came out with the creator, the TikTok creator program. That's how it is. So that's what I'm a part of now. And there's a lot of controversy about it. And honestly, I don't even know how I feel about it. A lot of people say that it's contributed to lower views and lowered their chance of getting on the for you page and stuff i've kind of wish washed with that i'm like my light just died but i do kind of go between that because i've seen lower views since i got in the program i have seen lower um following counts it is kind of i know a lot of people comment on my posts saying that they don't see my, my stuff anymore that they don't see my videos they have to look me up and then when i look at my analytics it does say that people are watching me either from their for you which is very low or from looking me up like they're looking at my profile so the way the creator program works is it has to be a video over a minute long it has to be original content not a stitch not um uh it can't be like tiktok shop that doesn't that won't qualify um it has to be over a thousand views before you make anything i've been in it since my daughter's first birthday party because I when I started posting about her birthday party I made a good bit of money from it so I've been in it for a little over a year now and I've made a couple thousand dollars but it hasn't been anything that you would think is insane especially because I have had a lot of videos I had one video go to I think 12 million I've had a couple go to four five six million I got paid nothing for any of those because it wasn't a minute long and that really kind of sucks I need a drink it's getting hot in here the sun's coming in here and it's hot and I'm talking a lot. I could literally talk about this stuff all day. I love social media. I love, this is why I graduated with this degree. I'm obsessed with this stuff. Everybody knows that the way that you make money off of art the, until now, the best way to make money on social media is through brand deals. And that's true. I mean, it is. The thing with brand deals, it's hard to get a good brand deal. I've had, I've worked, I've been able to work with a lot of cool companies. Like I've worked with Goldbond, I've worked with Cascade, Dove, Dyson, a lot of baby brands. I've worked with a ton of baby brands. I've worked with some pretty big, reputable named companies. And there's so many, there's so much red tape when it comes to working with brand deals because one, it's hard to secure those brand deals. Me And now I am under a management company that helps me basically negotiate contracts because I hate negotiating contracts. It is not fun. I have worked in the industry. I literally worked for a company where we ran ads, where we did social media. So I've done things like this um, on the brand side and as the creator side. It is so stressful to do brand deals though. It is great. I am very happy when I get them because some brands will come out the gate and offer you just what you've never been offered before and you're like oh my god that's my worth like that's awesome like, and then there's other brands that will offer $25 for a post and you're like no I'm not posting for $25 like that 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 doesn't make any sense to sum it up that is actually a main source of my income when I get them 
I only do about one brand deal a month, but it does pay more than all of the other ones combined so far. Brand deals are definitely worth doing. They're just, they're, they're harder to come by. And we get into the number one moneymaker for me that has kept a stable income for me that has literally replaced my salary job that I had a degree for is TikTok shop. And I know I was a hater of TikTok shop. I couldn't stand it. Anytime I had a video pop up, I'd swipe. I was like, oh my gosh, it, I'm swamped with ads. I can't stand it. Like there's no good content anymore. And then I gave in and I started posting on TikTok shop because I realized now why everybody is posting on there. For one, it's really cool because you're able to try out different products. I know like 90% of my wardrobe now, my closet is full of TikTok shop clothes. Literally what I'm wearing today, this came from TikTok shop. Literally everything on there comes from the same brands that are on Amazon, the same brands that are on Shein, the same brands that are at Walmart. To get onto the creator side of TikTok shop, the reason that I started posting on there was really more of an experimental thing. My views were tanked. Like they were so bad back in March, April-ish. I was like, I've got to do something. Like I'm, I'm not making any money. I'm not getting any brand deals because nobody was seeing me. So I was like, okay, well, let me try something else. Let me try a TikTok shop. I posted like one or two videos. My views immediately went up. Like, and it sucks because you spend all this time creating content. And that's why I started posting on YouTube and uh, Instagram more because I like the creative side. And I post them on TikTok too, but they don't do as well anymore. That's how my platform got started on TikTok was doing DIYs and talking about motherhood. And now those are barely ever seen because TikTok shop has taken over. But the more I've gotten into it, the more I've realized that I actually really like it because one, you can rely on it for views. And it's a steady income now. I'm making passive income as I'm making this, I'm making money. And I've made between one and $2,000 a month since April, I think somewhere around there. And I mean, I've seen people making a lot more than that, but I am just now taking it seriously. I started, I posted one video and it was me in this like, blue two-piece set and I literally was just talking like I always do wasn't even trying to make it a video like for an ad I just posted the TikTok shop link and it blew up I think it has like a million views I started getting so many sales once I posted that and I started seeing the sales and that say those sales lasted me like four months I was like okay I'm gonna post on this more I made like three thousand dollars from that one video I was like, that's insane. That's freaking insane. And I've just started taking it seriously really back last month. I started posting more consecutively. I've started posting like every day I'll post a TikTok shop video and I'm about to start posting one or two a day because honestly, I don't want to get rid of my platform because I do like posting my DIYs and my vlogs and my talking and stuff. I don't want to lose my personality, but at the same time, those videos are not getting shown anymore and it sucks because you're putting all that effort and that work into it for it just to flop. Anyway, <laughs> I know a lot of people have talked about TikTok shop, but what I've started doing is a lot of those TikTok shop things I post on my Amazon. So I make commission from Amazon and TikTok shop. I've talked a lot and I'm sweating because it's hot in here. Those are my main sources of income and that's been enough for us to be able to, like my husband pays for all our utilities and our home, our cars, stuff like that. I pay for groceries and clothes and anything that we want to do, have fun, like that stuff I pay for it. And now it's kind of like we've equaled out, like we're able to just feel more free. And I don't know how long TikTok shop's going to last. I'm kind of milking it as much as I can because I know a lot of people are making a ton of money off of it and I can only hope to make that much that'd be amazing but yeah this the reason that I wanted to make this video is because this is the year that I have made more money than I've ever made before ever or literally ever in my life um and it's been primarily from social media so I really want to talk about it because I've always wanted to do this it's been a big dream of mine for as long as I can remember and it is feasible so it does take a while to get to it like I said I've been posting on social media for years and I know some people that post for just a couple months and then start making thousands of dollars and that's awesome. So you never know, you never know how it's gonna go. You never know what's gonna happen. Just don't give up hope. Sometimes it takes a little longer than you'd like, believe me, I understand that. And yeah, so that's it for this video. Uh, check back Friday for a vlog.